Hello, good evening, I'm Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. Coming to you live here from World Star Studios at Amsterdam Shopping Center. And tonight, after many, many years of not being on Oral Gibbs Live, he's back. The man himself, Mr. Alvin York. How are you doing, sir? Well, well, it's been quite a while, and it's good to be back. Well, it's good to have you in the program. Yeah. What, how many years? <laughs> Two, three years? I don't know. Probably, yeah. Yeah, see, and this thing was in Texas. Yeah, well, Texas, New York, and Missouri. The children scatter all over, man, so. You, you had a lot of barbecue in Texas? Huh? You, ha you ate a lot of barbecue? Yes, but, uh, yeah, you got two here, three there. Getting together is hard. Mm. So you got to deal with two, deal with three, and deal with everybody. You know, nine of them, and then they have grandchildren and great-grandchildren and all that thing, so, so how many, it's a crowd, man. So many grandchildren I don't know. 40, so? No. No? <laughs> no, it's about, grand's about 20 easily, and, no, well, that's, that's it. Uh, how many children you have in Texas? Huh? How many children you have in Texas? Texas, about six. Six in Texas? Yeah. Wow. Missouri, I got one, the eldest boy. Yeah. One, the other, the other boy I just met, the other one. Is in New York? Met you in New York still. Oh. And you, how many girls you got? Hmm? How many daughters do you have? Girls yeah, with four, five boys. Wow, wow. You got a big family, man. Yeah, well, it was a lot of work to get them where they are today. And I'm proud of where they are today because they're all independent and they're making it. When you say Martin, now got to come independent. No, I said Martin, do I be you? <laughs> I said I do, you don't like to hear that word, right? No. So you say all oh, the children are independent, so we can learn from that. Maybe St. Martin should become independent. Huh? Maybe St. Martin should come in independent. No, no. No? No. Oh, well, if St. Martin is so bad as it is right now for its people, what I hear every politician saying that he's looking out for the people, but his thumb finger always pointing toward him. If you can you imagine anything else? St. Martin is in bad shape or? So, you, so you're not too optimistic about independence for St. Martin? No. Independent on what? Well, St. Martin people is, is the lowest in the whole gang. How that could be, and we have millions of people coming here every year at all. But they, but they are going to, other people, not the St. Martin people. St. Martin people don't have anything oral. St. Martin people are worse off today than when I left here, must be 50 years ago. So you when, when I left here in 1956 or something, to go back to the States, mm -hmm. St. Martin people had the property, they had, they had a business here, they had a business there. The taxi drivers were St. Martin people, and they had oh. this, they had that. Today, who you have? Very few. So you were saying, in the land of plenty, we're hungry. Yes. I am saying it. Oh. But you know, Mr. York, we, we receive by boat almost 2 million visitors per year. Mm -hmm. Receive by air, what, a million, a mm -hmm. little bit over. And um, this is a billion dollar economy. Mm -hmm. But how many businesses does we have in town? Does St. Martin people own in town? How many taxi drivers does St. Martin really has in the majority? I heard that they have four or five hundred taxi drivers, four or four, I mean, licenses out. Mm. The same thing in bus, bus licenses out. But who owns them? Where are they? Can we say that we are progressing? If they have X amount of licenses out and St. Martin people do not have them, and they're not on the road because I do not see them on the road, four or five hundred buses. Wow. Who have them? So you're saying that Maybe St. Martin should have done what some other countries did where only the natives can own land or purchase land or own business. No, 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 no. St. Martin people should have been in a position that they didn't have to sell to survive. Hmm. They should have been in a position that they didn't have to sell to survive. So you say When I left here, hmm. a lot of the land around, all around, St. Martin people had owned. Today they don't own anything, man. Is that really improvement? But I can hear the politician 
and election time, me ask now, take care of you and this and that. my people, my people, my people, what? But they, they have a nice car and they have nice clothes. The politicians have it. But some people drive nice fancy cars, they, they're satisfied. But they, but they better don't miss a payment. What about that? Mm. You have a car. I heard something about if you have one or one, two pay, pay checks, you can get a car to, on credit. But suppose you, you, you lose your job, what what you going to pay with? Then they come to hook your car up and you're gone. You know, um, St. Martin, right, is a unique island in the mm -hmm. Caribbean in that there, there's no other island in the Caribbean where you had descendants of former slaves with so much property owned by the natives, and that property was left for the children under this inheritance uh, mm -hmm. whereby you could not really sell because you have to have the entire group of the family members all agreeing, and that has caused quite some problem. But I think when you look at it, uh, succession property was the best thing <coughs> that our forefathers did for this island. Yes. If our for if my forefathers didn't leave anything, succession property, many of us would be in bad shape. As the Americans say, up shit creek without a paddle. Hmm? As the Americans would say, up shit creek without a paddle. Yeah, you would be in bad shape. Yeah. Because mid region. Melvision, when I left here, was Melvision, people have something. Today, a lot of the land do not belong to our people no more. We don't know who this piece of land belongs to. Now, now mind you, I didn't grow up here. But you, I left, but you I were born, born here, though? Huh? You were born in Samaritan? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I would have been deported a few months ago. <laughs> I, you're an American citizen now? Yeah, I, I got two. <laughs> I left here when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. I came back when I was about four or five, then I left when I was nine. And then when I came back after nine, I went and I came back with a man. And I went down to the States, I didn't like it. I come back, spent two or three years, then said no. I, I said jump in the frying pan here. And the f hot, hot, hot fire, I'll go back to the stage with a little loop for I went back to the yeah. <laughs> And I carried my children there. It was hard, it wasn't easy. Working for 10 children, it wasn't easy. But I did it, and thank God that I, I got you with it. I mean, you, you've had a remarkable life. In fact, in fact, you're even the subject of a book. Yeah. Not many Samaritans can brag about that. But that book, that book's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you have a copy of it? Uh, no, but I, okay, okay. I did have a chance to go through it. Oh, you read it, yes. And uh, it's also at Amazon. You can always purchase it yeah. at Amazon. When I was up there last year, mm -hmm. I got a copy. Oh, you got a copy. Okay. Yeah, but I ain't read it yet because it's... I think there's a copy also in the local library here in St. Martin, too. I heard that they had a few copies. The people borrowed them, didn't bring them back. But you know, that's how it's <laughs> But I went here. I guess they might borrow them so they can hold, that they have something to hold on Alvin York. What a bad person he is here. But, I got a copy of a book for you, man. But I think there'll be another run in the library when they hear that there's a book where you are uh, the main character. Yeah, I heard, I heard that, that they borrowed the, the book. I don't know if they brought them back. That book really, boy. But I forgot the title of the book, but it's on Amazon. You can get it at Amazon. Huh? It's at Amazon. You can purchase it Amazon. online at Amazon. Yeah. One of my sons, he gave me, what oh, didn't read it. Oh. He, he gave me the copy, yet. I asked the children, none of them claimed that they read it. But the book is that bad? The children grew up there. Oh. The children grew up and they see what happened. The children grew up and see that the father was getting up in the morning, going to work with the car car dealership mm. until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Reach home 5, reach home 6, 6.30. Praise is to my knowledge. Mm. I bought a house when I went up first. And the garage in the back, I converted into a workshop. And I worked there until about 11 o'clock at night so to make ends meet with 10 children. All right. So you used to repair cars and yeah, so forth? Yeah, in the night too. Wow. So I made it. So in that book, 
He mentioned all those things. But you were married to a pastor, right, for the church? Yes, we become a pastor, man. Yeah. Right now, she and the churches don't agree. Was it, it, it's, it's kind of unique because normally it's, it's, a, it's a woman that's married to a pastor, but you, you was a lucky guy to be married to a pastor. By lucky guy, man. <laughs> I would say that. I would say, yeah. you know, you have your ups and downs, things happen, but... No, but it was mainly downs. Yeah. I, w I was supplying everything around. But, but if it's mainly downs, how do you make, how you make 10 children, Mr. Yo? 10, mm -hmm. not even two or three, but you made 10. Yeah, okay, I made a mistake. <laughs> uh, no, I don't huh? I was supplying everything. In the past, I was just... Sometimes the, the, the members of the church come in to eat the dog and food. When, when they come home, they ain't got the food to eat, man. But I was being a nice person. Uh, I never argue. And, but the children, they saw it all and didn't know about it. But look at it from a positive aspect that you have 10 children and you're proud of them. I'm proud of the accomplishment of the children. Right. So you did something? The accomplishment good. of the children. Nurses, uh, teachers, contractors, respiratory therapists, what he he called here, he asked about a job. Mm -hmm. The kind of pay they want to see, he said, no, he ain't stay with you. St. Eve's a nurse. She called about a job, uh, I stay where I am. But she's about to retire within a few years anyway. No? So you see, you was a good father. Huh? You was a great father, man. You, 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 you provided for your children. And I provided for them, and I, the, the, the obviously go the right way. Mm. I tried my best, but the mother was go to church and pray, and God will take care of everything, but your children ch ch go in the street. What was the title of the book, if you, God gives you lemonade? You now know. make it on broken pieces. I have the book home, I tell you the truth. If you didn't have one, I would have been I was just pulling your leg, but you remember the title very well. <laughs> <laughs> it in a bag. Sometimes I'm looking for certain things, and the book fall out, so I look at it. At, Make it on broken pieces, I don't think. Right now, she's sick. You know, life, you know how life goes, you know? It's amazing, you know, because um, sometimes, you know, you, you look back at your life, wow, this, that. But when you look at what you did and you got your children, and you can see what they've accomplished, mm -hmm. I think you got to be satisfied, man. Look, I sacrificed me for my children. I'm, I'm not... The, this shirt is from them, this pants is from them. <laughs> you know, when I went up there, I brought down four suitcases, two big ones, two small ones. The majority of the clothes I carry up, the must have been given away. You know, so the children. It's good. No so argument, you, man. You invested in them and now they're yeah, everything. Payback time. Yeah, that's great. Half the time I call them and they ask, you need anything? No, I need anything, man. I have everything, yeah. So. I remember you telling me one time you had a granddaughter in Montana or something like that? Yeah. Is she still there? Still there. Wow, that's, that's a big state. Yeah, that was my youngest daughter married to a white man from Montana. Oh, okay. And the, the, she and the husband couldn't make, make it on the end, and the girl went to live with her white people. So she, of the other sister, is waiting to be appointed principal of a school. Oh, okay. Yeah, so look. So she looks look, look more white than black then? 90% white. So she, 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 because she my, my, my daughter is fair skin. Oh. And her, and her ex husband is oh. totally white. So you ever get a chance to speak with her sometimes? I didn't see her from the time she was small. Because the. The husband, her father was in, she born in Germany too. Oh. She was born over here, over here, over there. She born in Germany. And when. On the U.S. base? Huh? On the yeah, US on the base, base yeah. 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 And, but my daughter had to renounce her German citizenship before she could leave. Really? When the father time was up to come back home, mm. my daughter had to renounce her, the girl's citizenship as a German. She having a German? Uh, Passport at the time? No, 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 she can't get it. Oh. And she went and they went to Montana to live and mm -hmm. and everybody in Mon Montana was white. And my daughter just couldn't stand it. So she and the husband they they, they broke broke up and 
So he kept the child and the, the parents, but they had property and this and that, and they raised a girl. They raised a white. And yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. And then the big state, some people have property the size of St. Martin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't see her for a lot of years, but one of the days, she promised me she won't come down. That'd be nice. You got to come and see the place where her grandfather was born. Well, her sister may be out here this year. What is waiting to be appointed a principal of a school? Oh, okay. She wanted to make a trip out here to see where these where these crazy people came from. <laughs> <laughs> so she may may, may come out. You know, it's amazing because um, when young people come to St. Martin. Uh, see it for the first time from some modern parents. They're very impressed with some modern yeah. lives. It's a beautiful island. Mm -hmm. Well, there's plenty of them, and they're making it. Yeah. So you like Texas? No, it's too far apart. The tongues is too far apart. Because you, you're probably out on a ranch or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. Too much of just ranch business. Yeah. You know? oh, I love that, man. I love. I don't. That. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Look. I don't know if you admit my 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 eldest da daughter. Oh uh, no! I think when she came here, I was off island at the time. Huh? I know I didn't get. They, they didn't know okay, well. She and her husband have a ranch. She's a nurse. She go to work in the morning, six o'clock. Her husband he gone on the ranch. Me alone in this dog on place. <laughs> Got a bunch of land. <laughs> that ain't no fun, man. You can you can go out, take a stroll and get lost on the ranch. Yeah, you get lost there easily. <laughs> <laughs> but she loved it. Yeah, uh, I, I love Texas for that. Her house rented out. Yeah. Because she goes to go and there's rats. And I can't stand this rats, but, <laughs> but it's her life. So you prefer Missouri? No, Missouri, uh, too many whites. I like New York, man. Yeah. You're a New York man? Yeah, 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 New York. I guess. Um, your son was living close to that area where they had all that disturbance in Missouri uh, a year ago or something like that? About 90 miles away, yeah. He said he was living some little, some little hit tongue. Mm. Yeah. He wanted to sell the house now. He wanted to move back to Montana, not Montana, some little hit tongue on what? Uh -huh. In the way, we ain't getting along too good. So you gonna, probably you can go back to New York. No, he, oh. he, he don't like New York. <laughs> no, they, with the eldest boy on Swing Box now. He is. I would like him to come back to New York, but he's not a New Yorker type. Yeah, New York is a great state, man. Mm, that I don't. He grew up there. He left there as a young man. He went in the army. He spent 23 years in the army. Then he came back. He went to Montana. Now he's in Missouri. Now he wanted to go. He, I think he wanted to move back to Montana, something like that. So you see, you, you, your children even serve in the U.S. Uh, military. That's great. Oh, huh? I see some of your children serve in the U.S. Three of them. Yeah. Three of them serve. He served 23 years. Jacqueline served 12 years. And who else? Oh, in Shadrach, he served about six or seven. You know, sometimes I, I tell people that uh, Americans don't realize uh, what they have. I, I had the, I had the uh, opportunity one time to <coughs> um, be aboard an aircraft carrier mm -hmm. and to see all these young men and women, 5,000 strong, mm -hmm. and the work they're doing is just amazing. Mm -hmm. It was aboard a Theodore Roosevelt. They were doing maneuvers off Puerto Rico, and it's just amazing what they do. My eldest son, what you met? He don't have to work. The pension he get in, but he's a contractor with the other boy that you also met. Yeah. They are two con con contractors. Huh? But the eldest brother say he getting tired. So they're gonna come to Simran and retire like you? <coughs> no. No? no. What happened? Nobody wants to come to Simran anymore? No. All right. Simran is not a place we lost the we lost the country. We lost the country. I know a lot of people are gonna say now I am speaking about them. Saint Martin people lost Saint Martin. So there's no recovery there. Hmm? You think we can ever regain it? No. 
No. Right now we are speaking about going independent, which is a real joke. Independent on what? We got a million plus tourists, two million. Jamaica have much more tourists than us, and how come the Jamaicans are so, same thing? Well, tourists are not spending, this is not the olden days like when, and when I came back and spent a little time here in the 60s, that the tourists come with a bucket full of money and just spend it. The tourists, mm. today the tourists now are people like living like me in New York City. My neighbor used to come out here every year mm. and be a tourist. But he living in front of me. I live there, he live here. Yeah, it's amazing because the tourists of, say, 20, 30 years ago, one tourist then is spending the equivalent of 25 to 30 tourists a day. Yeah. That's quite a big difference. Mm. They just don't spend any money. They, they don't have it, over. Yeah. They don't have it. Tourists spend paid for passage over a period of six months. Then how much he got? He come out here, he walk around, get his son, do burn him up and all that thing, and he, he go back home and he might have had a good time, man. So, so, so you, you feel that um, we're not ready for a lot of things and you feel that like some other people have lost in Martin? They lost it. But we still— And the politicians are not helping them get it either. But when you look at Parliament, uh, there are 50 members of Parliament, and they're all people from St. Martin. So when people hear you say The parliament, the parliamentarian is what? All from St. Martin, basically. I hope that the parliamentarian start to look out for St. Martin and not strictly looking out for themselves. Too many of them are looking out for themselves. All of them looking out for themselves. Look out for the people. But what, how? No, mm. I know they say, Alvin, this and Alvin, this Alvin don't care. If you want to, this, the next time they may get to deport me, I don't care. I will pay my way. I don't care, Oral. Look out for the people, man. Don't, mm -hmm. don't come up and get up and yapping about the people, the people, the people, the people. The day after election, you forget the, the people? That, that's not right. Back in the States, uh, a politician, he don't come and, I don't give you this, no, give you that, give you that, no. You look at what he accomplished in the government, and you vote by his accomplishment, not by what he promised you, but St. Martin is what he promised you, and he's not going to give you anything. So you're never going to get anywhere. So who is at fault with the people? So you're saying that because the politicians promise the people things and a promise is a comfort to a fool, they're basically fools. But the politicians are getting his. The pay of a politician or is about how much? Of a parliamentarian. You tell me. Hmm? How much is it? You know how much it is? To what? Do you know the amount they get paid for? Uh... I heard them speak about hundreds of, to I mean, so many thousand dollars a month or what? It was established that the, the, the base pays around ten to eleven thousand dollars a month. A month? Then they have other benefits that go What on. are they really doing? Well, they, they are representing the people of St. Martin in Parliament. <laughs> and, and the people of St. Martin is, dipping, is slowly slipping backward. You know, you also have a council of ministers. They are involved in the day-to-day -day run of the country. Mm -hmm. tell, tell a poor person out there with three children around my region with that we have these great representatives. Tell them that, don't tell me, because I know where my meal is coming from every day. But tell the poor people out there that is suffering. You know, do we really have poor people on St. Martin? Do we really have poor Oral, people? When you drive around my region and all that thing, they got little side roads. Go up one of them one these days. You see, people that, it shocked me to know certain people walking, living in the back of where people don't see people living. You know, that's a rhetorical question. The reason I asked that question, you remember what year you came back to St. Martin? Uh, my father died in 1999. I came back about 2000. Okay. Well, in 1999 yeah. was the first time that I sounded the alarm 
on poverty. And it was based on that same area you're mentioning right yes. now, Middle Region, because my daughter was going to the Sister Mary Lawrence School, and she mm. would come home and tell me that she had to give her food to children. Yeah, to children that is hungry. To eat. And when I spoke about it here in this program, I was almost killed. I know. By politicians, political parties. Your children was going to Sister Mary Lawrence School. Right. I had just come new, and I heard about these, this, 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 this all going on. But it wasn't known around. But everybody denied it. Mm, People it denied it. I was made to look silly. In fact, there were letters written in the local newspaper against me that I was trying to instigate the public against the, the government, et cetera, et cetera. Just because I said that we had to be careful because there was an increase of poverty in St. Martin mm. and no one seemed to care about it at all, Nobody especially cares. young children. Uh, St. Martin really, the island is fairly good, but we, we need better government. Look now for the people. You can't come, have an island. Everybody working. And that's 60, 70 percent of the money per week going abroad. Mm -hmm. What are you really doing? But that's, people have a right to do with the money what they want to do with it. But St. Martin people also should have a right to have a, uh, a job in his country. That's true. You read in the paper all the time that this, this person, up to today, somebody told me about somebody laying off all St. Martin people, taking in all other people. Is that fair? Is that fair, Oral? That our people can't get a job in their country? Before I went back to the States in 1956, when Hess started to build a refinery in St. Croix, mm. and me and your boy, Master Wati, had our little different opinion. I went to St. Croix, got a job, same afternoon, I reached, I had a job. The crew should tell you plain, Use an alien. The big job is his. Huh? Mm. You was a little further. Thank God I had American rights that I could have shown in my documents. That's how I made it. There was a lot of people there from Trinidad and this and that working. They were doing the dirty work. They used to look at me as if I'm some, some funny mm. thing to the boss. Huh? But some, I had American rights, man. Was magic there at that time, too? Who? Magic. Magic? Mm. I don't know. Oh. God. Are you I, from Trinidad? You mentioned Trinidad, you were there working at the plant. Uh, at yeah, the I don't know if you were there, but I worked with a lot of Trinidadians, and uh, there, was a, there was a pain, or uh, there was a pain. Be careful what you say, Mr. York. I don't want you to get in any trouble with, uh, with my Trinidadian friends. <laughs> or when I went to Trinidad on a ship mm. with one of my Leisure time, go out on ships. Those Trinidadian told me in Point Pierre, we're we gonna make sure when this boat go, you foreigners ain't gonna be aboard it. But we got to come here in St. Martin and honor <laughs> them, all right? That's what they told you? They didn't treat me that way in Trinidad. Wow. They're gonna make sure that we foreigners not remain there in Trinidad to do what, to starve? <laughs> so, no matter who, the, my good friend, Magic, I see him a long time. When I just spoke to him, I haven't spoken to him for a while, but uh, he looks good. I saw him something in the road. He looks good. My good friend Magic may not like I said it, but yeah. uh, it, it was in San Fernando Point Pierre or something like that. They want to make sure we found out no remain in Trinidad. So, so where was the best port you ever sailed into? Brazil. Brazil? Yeah. Well, uh, nice girls there, man. Yeah, I'm damn right. <laughs> <laughs> damn right. <laughs> I was there three times, and I love it, man. Yeah? <laughs> I know it. Uh, can't compare the truth of that. Trinidad, not a man. <laughs> All right, when we went to Trinidad, the Trinidadians used to come in Aruba, and the Trinidad, this and Trinidad, that Trinidad, that. We go to Trinidad. We expect to meet something. Mm -hmm. They're playing American old rock and roll music and all that. That kind of thing, come really? on. Right, but they have the steel pan and, and, and calypso. Yeah, but they were playing old American rock and roll. Yeah? Yes. We gone to hear Steel Band and Calypso, we hear in American music what we just left the States. Oh. Yeah. So. And you used to work on a ship? 
Yeah, I was a seaman for quite a, quite a while. What kind of ship was it? Ocean tankers, yeah. oil, oil, oil tankers, the big ones. Yeah. Wow. It was easy work. You work four hours, you are four, you know, you work four. And it wasn't hard work. You get to see a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a tourist man. Yeah. <laughs> wow, so, so at least you had a great time sailing the ocean too. Yes, yes, my younger days, yes, I had a good time. The same day, this Venezuela that is so badly off now, some ships are gone, you're in Venezuela every three, four days. Yeah. And those people was really had it made, man. I love Venezuela. Mm? Beautiful country. Yeah, but now. It's amazing. I've, I've been to Venezuela three times. It's such a beautiful country. The best Italian restaurant I've yeah. ever eaten outside of Italy yeah. was in Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah. That's great. I was Colombia one time. I didn't, uh, I didn't like it. Mm. Colombia was a different story. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you're back home here now for how long now? You, About six, 15 years. years yeah. And it wasn't 15, 18 years. No. So you're back home 15 years, and um, you're happy now, though, right, at least? No. Oh, we have to, you think we should have a ministry of happiness? I spoke about that last Yes, night. a ministry of happiness, yeah, but it shouldn't be he alone happy, it should be the people. <laughs> but that's the idea, is to get to make sure the people are taken care of. Well, then the, gov the government should be contributing toward him, toward being, that he can help the people. Yeah, we're trying to, um, I mentioned it last night that we should seriously consider having an additional ministry just to deal with the happiness of the people, you know, ministry of happiness. But that will be cutting into the other ministers lump sum. They may not like that, that, they got, that the minister of happiness getting as much as them, uh, they, they wouldn't like that. Well, that would be too bad for them because ultimately the goal is to make sure that we have many, many, many happy people and we have children that are happy and going to school with food in their belly and not hungry. Yes, but do you think the government that we have shouldn't be, be taking care of all of that? I, I assume. That, that shouldn't happen, all right? But I can remember one time, since I'm here, I don't hear his name called so much about Will Johnson. Oh, Sarah. He was something in, at the school down in the quarter, and I heard him speak, Mugetran should have something in the morning to eat and this and that. Mm. He was, he was speaking like that. I don't know if it did come about, uh, they turn it down, I don't know. Truly what, but what that happened. But that a program in the Juliana International Airport that sponsor the program of breakfast for the schools, etc. I don't know if it's still on now, but they did it uh, a while back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what about elderly people? Because a lot of elderly people are also- A suffering. lot of elderly people here in bad shape. <coughs> Many of them came here, and some St. Martin had also worked all their life. But now that they are retired or they are no more able to work. They expect the government to, the government should be looking up for them somewhere or the other. Why well, heard some of them getting a, a little pension of 300 guilders a month. How can you live on 300 guilders a month? Oh, welfare, they should be getting. Uh, something, something that can keep them. Because you can't, you can't make it well. People that work in, some of them are and live in hell to make it. And when you're gonna give somebody, like I saw on, on your show, you had a fellow was on there some night there on the friend's side. And, and they're, they're getting some kind of problem with that. They work there all their life and on the Dutch side you now, they're not giving them a right pen, pension or some, something. Those things are not, not right. But that's the government. That's the law we have. So what else on your mind that you are happy about or not happy about? What I'm happy about is a few days ago I wasn't feeling too good, mm. and today I'm feeling fairly good. What I'm not happy about is when I see people that is suffering. I don't like, like that because I could have been in their position if I didn't 
go on to the United States, work, sacrifice, mm -hmm. and that today I get, a, I'm not a rich man, but I get enough to at least keep me a little comfortable for the, for the month, and every month I know it is there, you know? But if I have remained here, what the heck? The people that remain here, some of them made it, mainly politicians. The only, the only people that I really see some not made it is politicians and Indians and foreigners who got their stored in front street. So you're saying if you want to make it and become rich, you got to be a politician? Yes. I'm saying that. That's not good. No, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Is that the reason why we've seen so many people now get ready for September 26th, even clergy people and everyone else? They had, an, they, they, they had a letter in the paper today about the government who was, was trying to turn that off too, wasn't it? Put it on the November elec election date no more. You mean the September 26th? Uh, yeah, September 26th. I don't know. I, I think that was a rumor started on Facebook or something. But that like is that. a dangerous rumor, Warren. Right, yeah. If it's a rumor, it is dangerous. Why? Why do you think? Why do you say it's dangerous? Dangerous, dangerous. Yeah, why? Threatening to harm people. Oh, yeah, that's not good at all. If that is true, I don't know. Yeah, that's not good. I don't know. But, you know, you always have instigators, and they will take the Facebook and say all kind of weird But if things. an instigator in such a serious, serious thing should put his true identity over it, I don't see it. No, they know who the person is that uh, posted it. Yes, I want to post it, man. I would have sent it. I kind of want to write a man. Mm. I want to put my name. Yeah, but he's not anonymous. He's not afraid to put his name to it. That's a dangerous thing. Mm. Well, let's hope that um, all those threats uh, stay where they are, as threats and never really materialize. Yeah, <coughs> hope so. So you're looking forward to September 26 parliamentary elections? I am scheduled to be in the United States September. Oh, so you're going to miss the... I may not be here. I can be here, but my, my schedule in reality, as far as my churn is, is sudden right now, is for me to be in Texas, September, going to take a physical. Oh. In a hospital there. Well, that comes for us, but it's a pity you're gonna miss the big, the big, big event. In no, it don't. Uh, well, it don't make no difference to me. Uh, September, I may be here because they say I supposed to be there. Okay, the agreement we had when 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 the yeah. came up back in December sometime was to be back to see the doctor in September. But they ain't written on stone. I can always cancel it. The chair may not be happy, but. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mr. York. <coughs> September 26th parliamentary elections are gonna be, it's gonna be the mother of all this time around. I don't know, or St. Martin is so far gone. Mm -hmm. I don't know who can bring it back. I mean, so far gone. You look over in this island, people come to this island, all they see is wealth. They see beautiful cars, they see beautiful people, they see people happy, going about their business, working. We don't see, we don't have people on the streets begging. Let me take a call for you, Mr. York, mm -hmm. uh, Or Oral <coughs> live, you'll call her. Hello? You're on live, call her. Hello? Yeah, you're on live, call her. Hey. Yes? Mr. York, it's really nice to see you and to hear you. You are making a very good contribution. And you are doing things so intelligently. You are a man of wisdom. And with the other remarks that were made, according to what I observed during the parliamentary meeting, about killing and so forth and all the rest. God is in the midst of everything. We are not going to allow it to happen. 
It is not a nice comment. And uh, as we all know, it has never been typically <laughs> since Martin. But that, that, that uh, threat came from your neighborhood, one of your neighbors, and that's a St. Martin person. Came from? Yes, uh, that's a bad remark. And that's not typical in St. Martin. You all know that. What I know, what I could notice is that there are a lot of youngsters that are refusing to take any kind of, uh, you would say, any kind of <coughs> to what the elders are saying. And that is a step in the wrong direction. And I'm absolutely in agreement with you, Mr. Mr. York, and I have always said the same. St. Martin is not ready for anything called independence. It would be making a big, big mistake. It's not going to work. Definitely it's not going to work. There are too many traits whereby it can be seen that since madness who are uh, already established here, already uh, a kind of interdependent. So how could they be independent? You understand where I'm coming from? It's terrible. All right. And as an elder, I am saying to the youth across the board, stop making these kind of remarks about killings and all this sort of a thing, and respect your elders. Even so, the politicians that you would consider, ah, this, this, he, this old man here, politics and this, that it is good to have <coughs> elders among the youth. Okay. The youth cannot do it by themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lake. So? Yeah, Mr. Lake is right. Certain things that uh, you want to listen. Uh, when I left here to go back to the States to stay, 1965, St. Martin was a completely different St. Martin than it is today. The St. Martin we have today is not the St. Martin that we had when I left here and Belto was a little boy. The St. Martin today is nobody cares. Everybody just looking out for themselves. I don't say nobody cares because I care, you care. Yeah, yeah, but we are we are looking at we are being looked at as fools. They they just worrying about they just worrying about that mm. until they get in us jam and then they come running to you. You know, so some of them really is <laughs> independent on what. Mm. <coughs> Uh, let's uh, take a call for you. Oral Gibbs Live. You want to call it? Hello? Yes, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I'd like to uh, inform Mr. York.
smoker, you light it off. It's, it's, it's talk. Can you can you speak a little clearer, sir? A little louder, please, because I'm I can't hear <coughs> the volume anymore. Uh, okay, uh, you can hear me clearly now. Yeah, right, clear yeah. now. Yes, I just like to advise Mr. Yorki. He's doing a good job. However, he has to realize that the 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 country is Martin, the islands is Martin has changed because the path of growth, tourism growth, it, uh, has poverty, all over the world has poverty. And that's something reality, that's something you cannot change. Every world, any part of the world has poverty. So, so, so you're saying that the poverty in Zimbabwe is at an acceptable level, that's okay? Uh, if you go to Brazil, it's, it's an unacceptable level. Zimbabwe has poverty, Anguilla has poverty, Spanish has poverty, all over the world has poverty. So it's just a matter of buff. So then, so then uh, we shouldn't be concerned, and that's what you're saying? No, we, we are concerned, but uh, you cannot say that uh, it's, it's so alarming that the, the, why we have poverty is not, and it's, it's, it's not true. Jesus says we have poverty. Most of those countries that you mentioned, they don't employ the world. In St. Martin, what you have is that people come from all over the world, and they are working, and it's the St. Martin people that are not working and now slipping into poverty. That's the difference. And yeah, I think that's the alarming part. People are too passive. They have to be more uh, bold and, 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 and demanding. But you sit down and be too nice. If you stay passive and be nice and accept everybody, that's what happens to you when you when you be a, a too nice boy, too nice girl. Things happen to you. Eh? So that's the reason why I think Mr. York wants to say something. Thank you very much. What you saying there about you shouldn't be demanding? I spoke certain things like that. That Saint Martin people, Elka job and other people working. First thing I heard, I discriminate against foreigners. I discriminate against anybody that come in my country and I can't live and you live in. And if you call it discrimination, you call it whatever you want. It is what I am speaking about. It is my hometown. I come here, I should be able to live, man. Not I come and I can't get a job because everybody come from all over the world is working, but St. Martinus can't. I've met a number of people that came from different Caribbean countries, some here for 20, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. and they love this island, they care about this island. Yes. There's a new wave of people coming the new, that that don't what we're care speaking about. about the island. The new wave that come in to just have a good time. That is what happened here. The new wave that just come to have a good time because St. Martin is paradise. Mm. That is the, the problem. They come to work. I agree. So what can we do, Mr. Yo? It's too far gone, or I don't, I don't know what you can do. Yes. It, it's way gone. It's way, way, way gone, man. I mean, we had um, the FCC and other members uh, of the cruise industry, representative of the lines here mm -hmm. in Parliament the other day. Mm. And they were telling the Parliament about their concerns about St. Martin. Yes. They have to have concerns about St. Martin. Look, back in the United States, had an election in September. Mm. And I'm not supporting Trump. What, but what Trump is speaking about, sending the Mexican back from Texas, mm. it is the truth. You know, you know, I'm a big Trump supporter, right? I'm not no, I'm not a Trump supporter. Either, but I, I, I think Trump is going to be a great president for the United States of America. I can't Although work for People him. don't like to hear that, but <laughs> that's my view. You, okay. don't, you don't like that, right? You, you want Hillary Clinton. Yeah, it's your girl. Yes, I'm, I'm Clinton. <laughs> Let me take a call here, Mr. Go Yo. ahead. Paul Gibbs live and call her. Hello. You're on live caller. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, concerning uh, Mr. York again, uh, would he agree that the, the law that Curacao passed, that uh, the 80-20 law, that 80% has to be working from Curacao uh, to Curacao and 20% are foreigners, that's a law that the politicians put in place. So we have to wake up, all politicians have to wake up and, and do the same. That's all I'm saying. And it's an unconstitutional law because they're part of the kingdom of the Netherlands. That law is really unconstitutional. It can't work. That's the other thing the one is speaking about. You see, it's not constitutional. We are part of the kingdom of the Netherlands, and Curacao can only pass that law if Curacao was an independent state, which it's not. 
So you know, we speak about things and we don't realize the legal <coughs> implications there. So politicians sometimes play games with the people and say, so well, we're going to pass a law, 80-20. You have to hire 80% of all people or vice versa. It's not, it cannot stand up in court. And I'm not a lawyer, but I'm telling you. So these are the games they're playing <coughs> with the people. Or they're just uh, polishing the people up, that's all. Exactly. Anyway, we have to go to a break. Okay. Thanks for calling, sir. So you want to add anything quickly there before we go? No, what is, uh, I'm happy calling to at least so you can explain it more. Yeah. So we need more calls like that that you can explain. So, Mr. York. Yeah. You really think that's a, that's a good idea, what Curacao was trying to do there? You think so much you did that? Well, I grew up in Aruba. Aruba, from the time I was a young man, passed all kind of laws that a Ruben had to get a job. The Bati Engle, like me, had to wait until a Ruben that come in first. That, that was just, they, were just, they were just taking care of their own people. Well, <laughs> you know, Kirsa was the same there's thing. No way, there's no and way you could go and say, that this is the law, Article X, Y, Z. No, you can't do that. Uh, any place supposed to look after their own world. There was a law in St. Martin, too. You know the well, law was? It should be a law. Falwati used to give you a little paper. I know that. And then a little yellow paper uh, like this. Take this to Mr. So-and-so. I know that. And I Mr. So-and-so better give you a job. I know that. That was the law. That was the law, yes. That was a strong leader. Hmm? I know you don't like that because, you know, oh. you may not like that because of your past experience, but you know uh, what? Hold, 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 hold. Main Cloud never had no big, big, big deal, you know? Oh, okay. No bigger falling out, you know? Okay. That's simple. I was, I was going back to the States, and I signed against his party. No. I know if I signed against his party— Of course, you create war there. And I did that, that I know that I didn't have a godfather to, come, to fall back on. Well, I came here, and everybody thought the boy was going to walk on me. Simple as that. And I said, nobody's going to walk on me. Uh -huh. So if, if that has been opinion asked, that, no, and so I, be it. I'll tell you one thing, you know, when you're a smart guy, because there are people in Simran who feel that they have a monopoly on being smart and outwitting people. Mm -hmm. And then they put up on a guy like you, and then they can't deal with it. Oh, really? You was in New York, man. I was in New York, a union shop store, oh. where you got to fight the boss and fight your own men at the same time. Only got a minute left. And I did it. If I could have do that among foreigners with men, as a foreigner, because they were American born. Imagine these little, white. Imagine the little boys in Samadhi. But I had to represent them. Mm. So, Alvin wasn't stupid. Well, I, I tell you, I, I told you, they told me that. They said, don't mess with Alvin. I don't, uh, I don't try to walk on anybody, but don't walk on me, man. I don't like it. I don't see you in trouble, right? I don't see you in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you say, Yo, I want to thank you for coming in. I wish oh, you sure. much success. I hope that you stick around for September elections. And if you can't, go take care of your health for us. That comes yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm feeling good now. But uh, well, the children, they, they, they still got it set in stone, September. Right. Okay. So I, I don't know. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Yo. Okay, good, man. Thank you, man. That's it for now. I'll see you next time. Tell you. Good night. Yeah. Okay, bye.